let's start with having a look at this magical animated shader system because it's it's a really nice little system it can do the things that we can't do natively in dash studio and one of them is that we can animate shader properties on the surfaces tab or from the surfaces tab should i say and we can do we can go one step further we can actually in fact animate textures on top of any object that we desire so this is an example here as I move my playhead, you can see that the movie, it's not really great animation, but it's, you know, a moving object nevertheless on my plane is changing. And I can even do that when I hit the play button. And that is very cool. I got a question about this and uh, it was about how do I put moving images on a TV? And this is how you do that. You basically replace the shader that is on the TV surface and then just go hit the play button. And then, you know, that swaps out each frame of this of this animation with an image sequence. And um, that's so that's one thing we can do, but we can also go and animate properties that we usually can't animate in Das Studio, like, you know, with the color of a channel, metallicity, glossiness, and so forth. So anything can be animated with the system. And I thought, let me go and quickly give you a demonstration of how this works. So first of all, I'll start with a brand new scene. And I'm going to go and switch this over into filament. I've got one filament draw options node in my scene because that's, that's how I like it, because I like working with filament. So if I go and create myself an object like a sphere, like this one here, and it uh, hasn't got the manipulator at the bottom because I didn't say Y positive, did I? Let me go and do that. <laughs> New primitive, and that's just going to be Y positive. Perfect. Here it is, sits right on the ground there, perfect. So I'm showing you this in filament because then I can show you some of the PBR properties as they are. So right now on the surfaces tab, we've got one surface that's called default as, as, we, as we would expect with primitives on the base channel. I've got something like the color channel here. I'm gonna go and put this to like a maroon only because that means it shows up the reflectivity a little bit better. So if I wanted to animate the shininess of this object, there's no way that as I do that under base glossy, uh, glossy roughness, I can change this value here. But if I set a keyframe, whoops, <laughs> glossy reflectivity, if I set a keyframe, that studio doesn't really want to know. So I'll go and click uh, plus here and then I go whoop, whoop, click, click plus here with full glossiness then i go and move my shader well sorry move my playhead forward and then i'm going to go and change this value to something like zero and hit a keyframe that studio doesn't want to know it's not it's not animating this by default and that's because it can't animate surface properties with the timeline it's just not something that we have in that studio so let me go back on this so that we don't have any keyframes. This is where a very exciting thing comes in handy, namely Alvin Bemar's animated shader system. Thank you so much for dropping the link, Brian. And that works once it's installed as a proper plugin. So you have to put in a serial number here under window. No, that's not it, under help about installed plugins, that's where all your serial numbers come in. So you have to go into your DAS account, grab the serial number. And once you've installed this product, you have to put the serial number into the Abbas field, and then it'll be activated. At that point, you get a new little tab here, which is called a bass. So if you don't have that open, you can head over, you can just right click on any of these spaces here and say add pane. And it's usually at the very top of it here. Uh, of course, not in my case. <laughs> so it'll be under window panes a bass. There we go. That's kind of an interesting bug here. It's under here. It doesn't seem to show up, but under here, under window panes, a bass, it shows up. So little bug there, one of those things. Could also be that I haven't done, which is what you should do after every time you update Das Studio under window workspace, update and merge menus. May have forgotten that. That's always an important thing to do. And now we have, nope, a bass is still not in the list. That's interesting. I'll let Alvin know. Or I'll let Das know. I don't know who's responsible for this. Who's responsible for this? Window paints a bass. Let's go and open that. And that comes up with a fairly harmless plane with only th well, pain with only three options here. Create an animated shader, copy an animated shader, reset the channels and keep the channels. We don't really need to worry about the bottom two here. The one at the top is the most important one. And it will now, if I select the object whose shader I'd like to animate, if I have to select that here, if I select that, go to the Abbas pane and 
use the first option, it will go and create an animated shader node. We can give it a name so that I can remind myself of what object I'm animating here. I'll leave the default, just animated shader, and it will now follow whatever the sphere has on its surface properties. So that's the clever bit. I think Das Studio natively can't animate anything on the surfaces tab, but it can animate anything that's on the parameters tab. And that's quite clever in the way that Alvin has written this. So if I go to the animated shader, it doesn't have any surface properties, which is to be expected. But on the parameters tab, I have something called a bass, first of all. And under a bass, if I open that up, I have the default surface properties of my object that was selected when I created that animated shader. So that is very clever. And in it, I see all the parameters that I can now animate. So for example, either the color or in fact, what I had here, the glossy roughness. If I go and drill into that, I will see it's glossy roughness, here we go. So before I do this, though, under a bass here, I need to go and enable this shader. So currently it's off and it's off by default. And we need to enable it so that it works. So let me go and enable that. Once it's switched to on, I can go ahead and literally animate any property that is now appearing on the parameters tab, which is now representing the shader. So a very cool concept there, but it's we need to understand how this works. So let me go and go back to my, uh, my glossy was it reflection here. Yeah, there we go. So it's currently set to zero glossy roughness. It's 100% shiny. If I go and move my playhead to say frame 15, and then I go and crank up the roughness like so, nothing appears to happen, but that's only because it doesn't live update. So if I go and wiggle the shade, the, the playhead here, then like, I see that my object in fact changes and I can see that the slider changes. Now watch what happens as I move the playhead. I can see that still nothing happens, but that's Das Studio's way of working with automatic keyframes. It hasn't set a keyframe at the beginning here. So I need to go and use the slider and just go crank that down. It also helps that on that keyframe that you're on at the beginning, just wiggle whichever property you want to change. And then I can go and move between these two values. Is that exciting or what? So now the glossiness or the, the, the roughness of the object can be animated. And that is exciting stuff. And this principle holds true for literally any property on my object. It looks like I currently can't see the keyframes, but that is probably because uh, no, I can't see the keyframes. Maybe under hidden, maybe we need to enable that. Usually it's other, but it looks like maybe hidden is what we need to enable as well so that all these properties are um, visible here. So now on the animated shader, I can go and see my keyframes. So if I wanted to go and drill down into this under properties, then I see a bass and under a bass, I have my default surface. And this is now where I can see all these properties. So under base, if I drill deeper, this is that keyframe that I'd see there. In fact, let me just go do that under glossy, under reflection. There I see the actual keyframe for the glossy roughness. Is that cool or what? This is really cool. And it doesn't just work with float values. So technically all these things are float values under the hood. It also works with more complex constructions like uh, color values. So a color isn't a float value. Let me go and animate um, the color under base, so base currently set to this. If I go and uh, use the same keyframe that on frame 15 here, we wanna have a different color. Let's say maroon isn't what I want. Maybe I'm gonna change this into something like a pink. Uh, once again, if we were to wiggle, then it changes into pink completely. So I need to go and make sure that, there we go, it has, it has actually acknowledged that keyframe. So you can see that the color value gradually changes from one into another. Uh, maybe it's not the best color to demonstrate this with. Maybe I'll Put it to something like a yellow. There we go, that'll, that'll work. So it has acknowledged it. It's just that you need to wiggle the playhead for this value to appear as the animated shader changes it out. And now we go in from one color into another. Very, very cool. So that is what this thing can do. And it works literally with any value on the on the surfaces tab here. Well, that's now on the parameters tab. Cool, huh? It is, I think so too, Yoshi. So then uh, let me show you something else, how we can animate these, um, uh, these properties like the changing textures. Let me go and create a new, well, let me just go and get rid of these two things here. 
Animated shaders can be reused, so applied to objects. So if I wanted to apply what I've just done to a different object, like a plane, then I can do that as long as the, the surfaces are the same. But I'm going to go and show you something else. So it'll be uh, another primitive, namely a plane. And I'm going to change this to Z positive so that it stands upright. And then I'll go and move it up a little bit. And I'll see if I can find a nice animation here in my uh, collection. So I'll just stay with the plane and on the surfaces tab, I'll head over to base and I'll pick some image that we can display on this. And maybe something better, maybe one of the one of the VDB things that we've recently done here. Maybe the one that I believe Yoshi refers to the Alka-Seltzer one. Let me do that. That's I, I call that the Meteor. Let me just see if it works. If I go and uh, use number 23. As an example, yeah, there we go. Cool. So that that works. That's just the two D animation of of this uh, of this VDB thing that I've done there. So let me go and put the first frame of that sequence onto my plane now. And that's probably not going to look like much yet. It looks like it's uh, it's got it's just showing black. Uh, it's got 63 frames, this animation. So I'm just going to make a mental note of that. Last frame is 63. First frame is zero, so it actually has 64 frames. So let's, let's just make a mental note of that. Put the first one in that looks like there's nothing on it. And let's go and animate that on my object now. So just like before, with my plane selected, I'll head over to the Abbas tab and I'll say create an animated shader. I'll leave the defaults in place, but you can rename it if you like. And then I'll go over to the parameters tab of my animated shader. At the top here in a bass, I will enable this. So if it if you animate these values and you see, hey, nothing's happening, it's probably because you haven't enabled the animated shader. So turn it on. And then I need to do something else. I need to go and enable the files animation. That is another property that we uh, need to enable so that the shader can go and swap out the files. So if I do that, I can see that there's another slider that comes up, which is the completion slider. And this is an important one. So we're going to go and uh, set our timeline to the same amount of frames that my animation has. So in my case, it's 64 frames at the very bottom here. Under total, I'm going to go and set that 64. So I have frames 0 to 63 to play with. And with that done, I'm going to go and uh, just wiggle that completion slider here. Just, you know, just, just wiggle it so that this is, to, this is creating a keyframe essentially, which, you know, makes my life a little bit easier. Now I go and grab my playhead and turn it or move it all the way to the back of the animation to the last frame of the animation, at which point I want this completion slider to be at 100%. And that is, that's all we need to do. So now as I go and move my playhead, you can see that the slider kind of moves and it will be at 100% at the end of my animation. And it'll be at 0% at the beginning of my animation. And that's, that's almost all there is to it. So I believe Carrara works like this. I think um, Blender also has a way of working like that, that you have a completion that at one point in the animation, you want something to have finished, and at another point, you want it to start, essentially. And it doesn't really care uh, how many frames there are. The timeline is going to work that out. So the funky thing is now, if I go to my default uh, surface here, and I go to base, and I will go and have a look at the kind of the base file name here. It doesn't really show because it's part of the uh, it's part of the base color. If I go and move this, I can see that depending on which frame of the animation I'm on, there'll be a different frame displayed and loaded here in the base channel. So that's that's kind of neat. If you hover over it, <laughs> if you hover over it, you will see that. If you look very closely, you'll see that the that the frame number changes. This is how it does it really. So these blue flashes, they happen because of filament. If I go and switch this over to texture shaded view, then I shouldn't be seeing those. And this is now where my animation literally goes and appears on my flat plane and it's being changed out. This is very, very cool. In addition, you could change other properties if you like, but the, the kind of the, the key to this is now you can have something animating on a screen, like on the intro sequence of my J Place title sequence. When we go into the cinema and on the cinema screen, there's a moving piece of video. This is how that would be done. So haha, ha, very cool.
Jay is playing with this indeed. Yes, yeah, so very exciting project by Alvin Bemar, and he's expanded this so that you can also use it with a sequence of VDB files. I've shown last Saturday in the Das Plus stream how that works. So that's what I wanted to show you. It's a really, really cool project, Abbas Anim Alvin Bemar's animated shader system. And it is literally one of those things that expands the functionality of Das Studio's timeline just so much. So thank you so much, Alvin, for doing that. And thank you so much for watching, by the way.